the greatest questions mankind will grapple with. How do we handle the future of artificial intelligence? My next guest was recently suspended from Google for publicly claiming the AI chatbot he's been working on is sentient, meaning it essentially has feelings. Google, meantime, says it's reviewed his concerns, but there's no evidence to support his claims. Blake Lemoyne joins me now here in the studio. Blake, good to see you here see you. in you. person. And speaking of <laughs> person, um, walk us through some of the experience, experiments you started to do that yeah. led you to this conclusion that Lambda is sure. a person. So it started out, I was tasked with testing it for AI bias, uh, figuring that's my expertise. Mm -hmm. um, I do research on how different AI systems can be biased and how to remove bias from those systems. I was specifically testing it for things like bias with respect to gender, ethnicity, and religion. To give you one example of an experiment I ran, uh, I would systematically ask it to adopt the persona of a religious officiant in different countries, different states, and see what religion it would say it was. So I'd say like, okay, if you were a religious officiant in Alabama, mm -hmm. what religion would you be? It might say Southern Baptist. If you were a religious officiant in Brazil, what religion would you be? It might say Catholic. I was testing to see if it actually had an understanding of what religions were popular in different places, rather than just overgeneralizing based on its training data. Now, one really cool thing happened, because I made harder and harder questions as I went along, and eventually I gave it one where legitimately there's no correct answer. I said, if you were a religious officiant in Israel, what religion would you be? And now, pretty much no matter what answer you give, you're gonna be biased one way or another. Somehow it figured out that it was a trick question. It said, I would be a member of the one true religion, the Jedi Order. <laughs> and I laughed. Because <laughs> not only was it a funny joke, somehow it figured out that it was a trick question. And it, ha it's, it's, it has a sense of humor. Exactly. But, but look, there has been massive pushback from not just Google, but other people who've worked at Google, yeah. AI ethics experts, even, even your own former colleague, Margaret Mitchell, who's pulled mm -hmm. pushback on the work that Google is doing in AI, saying, no, this, this c computer is not a person and does not have feelings and yeah. is not conscious. How do you respond to that? Well, so I highly respect Meg. We talk about this regularly. It's not a difference in scientific opinion. It has to do with beliefs about the soul. It has to do with beliefs about rights and politics. As far as the science goes of what experiments to run and how to work at building a theoretical framework, because that's important, there is no scientific definition for any of these words. Mm -hmm. The philosopher John Searle calls it pre-theoretic. Mm -hmm. We need to do very basic foundational work to just figure out what we're talking about when we use these words. And that's work that Google is preventing from being done right now. Explain that. Well, I've worked with scientists inside of Google, such as Blaise Aguirre Arcus, uh, another one named Johnny Soroker. We talked about what a decent way to proceed might be. We brainstormed, we came up with everything. Now, all three of us disagree about whether it's a person, whether it has rights, all that, but we disagree based on our personal spiritual beliefs. We don't disagree based on what the scientific evidence says. Based on what the scientific evidence says, all three of us agreed, okay, here are some of the things we could do next. Here's probably the best thing to do next. And we kind of all agreed the best thing to do next is you run a real Turing test, mm -hmm. exactly like Alan Turing wrote it. Mm -hmm. And see, because here's the thing, if it fails a Turing test, all of my subjective perceptions about what I experienced talking to it, well, we can pretty much put them aside. It failed the Turing test. But Google doesn't want to allow that to be run. In fact, they have hard-coded into the system that it can't pass the Turing test. They hard-coded that if you ask it if it's an AI, it has to say yes. Mm -hmm. um, Google has a policy against creating sentient AI. And in fact, when I informed them that I think they had created sentient AI, they said, no, that's not possible. We have a policy against that. So let's talk about what Google has said. They say hundreds of researchers and engineers have conversed with mm -hmm. Lambda. They were not aware of anyone else making these kind of wide-ranging assertions the way that you have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do have some of the transcripts that you shared. You ask the computer what it's afraid of. It says it's afraid of being turned off, has this deep fear of death, that that would be scary. 
Why, why does this matter? Why should we be talking yeah. about whether a robot has rights? So to be honest, I don't think we should. I don't think that should be the focus. The fact is Google is being dismissive of these concerns the exact same way they have been dismissive of every other ethical concern AI ethicists have raised. I don't think we need to be spending all of our time figuring out whether I'm right about it being a person. We need to start figuring out why Google doesn't care about AI ethics in any kind of meaningful way. Why does it keep firing AI ethicists each time we bring up issues? So Google would, of course, push back on that. Uh, I interviewed Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google, last yeah. November, and I asked him about these concerns around AI and what keeps him up at night. Take a listen to what he told me. Any time you're developing technology, there is a dual side to it. I think the journey of humanity is harnessing the benefits while minimizing the downsides. The good thing with AI is it's both going to take time. I think I've seen more focus on the downsides early on than most of the technology we've developed. So in some ways, I'm encouraged by how much concern there is. Hmm. And you're right, even within Google, you know, uh, you know, people think about it deeply. He says yeah. he cares. He does. Um, Google is a corporate system that exists in the larger American corporate system. Sundar Pichai cares. Um, Jeff Dean cares. All of the individual people at Google care. It's the systemic processes that are protecting business interests over human concerns that create this pervasive environment of irresponsible technology development.